a two, a three, a four. We are Movie Menu Reviews, the founding fathers of podcasting. On today's menu, we'll be reviewing Hamilton. Welcome everyone, I'm Dan Man Munoz, host of Movie Minute Reviews, your weekly movie news and reviews podcast. We are live through Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Actually, correction, I'm Dan, the Hamilton Munoz, as we are reviewing Hamilton on Disney Plus today. Joining me are my special guests, Z Washington and Heather Burr. You're definitely a ham, I'll give you that. I was just going to say that. I was more like, Dan the ham. <laughs> I'll take it because it's still awesome. He's the ham. Yes. Uh, that's what he is. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. How are you guys doing? Uh, well, we're, we're still alive and we're still not. I mean, I'm definitely COVID-19 clean. Are you? Are you guys? So far, so good. All I right. was just going to say that. Like exact words. So I'm, yes, reading, I'm reading your mind. This is what's going on here. No, no. I read her mind because I said what she was going to say. Uh, but uh, luckily we are. But who knows if the movie industry will be because it seems like uh, the Batman Mission Impossible and more films are to resume filming in the UK. Dun, dun, dun. So what do you guys think about uh, uh, England opening up the movie industry again to continue filming? I'll let Heather take it before I go into my rant. Uh, I think it makes perfect sense. Um, they're going to make some money off the industry. They're taking advantage of the fact that uh, America is still kind of shut down. So I, I, I feel like this is pretty predictable, pretty, pretty much what's to be expected. Um, I mean, the show must go on, so we got to film somewhere. Can't film here. I think it's really, really dumb. I think this this is such a horrible move. Um, they're they're planning on on filming things in what they're calling a bubble. So essentially, what they're gonna they're planning on doing is you know shipping everybody over, keeping everybody contained within sets, and then you know filming the movie and getting it done in that way uh, without with the restriction that people will not be allowed to leave. So that sounds all great and possible to accomplish but the reality is like you would need to make sure that nobody left the set that means that well, where does the coffee come from do do the stars get their their favorite lattes or do they bring starbucks on site and then have a barista on staff like there's just so much that could go wrong in this situation it just takes one remember it just takes one person to have the covid-19 to be a you know either somebody who's showing symptoms or asymptomatic and then it's going to lead to the whole shutdown again i think but the whole thing the whole thing the whole thing that they're, they're planning on or they're banking on is the fact that they're everyone who's involved in the production is going to be quarantined together so that's yeah. how <laughs> so yeah it, that's, it's, that's, i think that's a huge relief to, though i think what z's trying to say is that there's still oh. going to have to be outside influences but my question I, for you i z know what is, z's trying to say i'm saying i'm saying that's the logic behind yeah. that is still still it's silly is what i'm it's saying. silly With, it's silly yeah but are you so you're not upset that they're filming in the uk it's more that they're filming at all yeah, I, I honestly feel like like this is the UK is currently on a drop, right? So when you're looking at, at you know, California, California, you're looking at the United States, we're on a peak, we're going up. The UK finally is going down. Opening up this to Americans who are notoriously rebel. We'll talk about this, you know, they're. They're 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 feisty. They're rebellious. They're not going to follow the rules because they're Americans. Uh, yeah, it, it's putting the UK at risk, at a risk that they don't need to take. And honestly, the film studios really need to recognize that even if they do finish filming, these movies are not going to be released anytime soon. 
especially if they're contributing to the problem. So, yeah, I would personally say, why, why even start? Let everything settle. Let's figure out what the next steps are. Do animation. We've been seeing that animation is booming right now. Uh, do CGI work. Do movies in, in that scope. And I think you have yourself a, a, a good you know, contribution to the medium, but like actually taking human bodies to one side, they're talking about going to London. London is an epicenter of the virus. You know, even if they have to get them to the bubble, as Dan was saying, to quarantine together, you need to get them through the airport, which is a notoriously deadly area to go through and then get them, shuttle them to this location who are the drivers? Who are who? Who are the people who are handling the cars? There's just so many questions that are like, you know, I don't think I don't think film studios are even caring enough to do something that's going to be humane. And I think that it only takes one person. You know, the NBA and the NFL, like they're trying, they were trying to do an MLB. We're trying to open up the the sports league. And immediately, once they started like doing it, they found three people who were like in, and I think uh, it was MLB that were like sports players that already had it, just like that, like just having people around each other right now. It's how are they going to gonna even get Americans to Europe anyway? I thought we weren't allowed to fly to Europe. We're allowed to go to the UK. We're not allowed to go anywhere else, except Dubai, apparently. <laughs> but that's a, but that's which, an in joke. Which, which, which <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll discuss later uh also a question is that you know it's not just the batman or mission impossible there are like other productions going on mm -hmm. are these going to be scheduled throughout the rest of the year are they like back to back uh because it just seems like uh anything more than like one film at a time is kind of is already alone a little like risky but having multiple productions going on at the same time having their own type mm -hmm. of bubble is is rather dangerous as well so i wonder yeah. how they are going to plan all that out because it seems like so much effort for like not enough reward right yeah an indie makes sense to me like if you're doing an indie with like say 15 to 30 people on set that makes sense but if you're filming something like the batman or mission impossible you're talking about at least 300 people on set and but they're, they're also they're also talking about uh, Jurassic World Dominion, which is the third right. Jurassic World movie, Fantastic Beast Three, Cinderella, a live action remake of The Little Mermaid. So these aren't mm -hmm. small films; these are these are big films. Right. So at one given day, they're going to have at least three hundred people on set. How are they going to contain it? I don't think they have a contingency. I think they're planning on this working, and they're not thinking about what the possibility will be if the virus gets introduced. And that's stupid. And I and I hope they get sued. But you know that they're putting into the contract that they can't sue them. I, I'm sure, and mm -hmm. uh, like you mentioned, like they're not going to be shown in theaters for a while, anyways, because everything is keeps getting pushed back. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Stay tuned as we continue this discussion. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe we'll continue it. Maybe <laughs> not. We'll see. All right. So with that said, let's go ahead and let's move on to why everyone is here. Duh. What? The for the movie review, hello. Oh. That's why I'm here. Um. <laughs> it's always uh, hard to time the joke. Yeah, I know. Th sorry. Thanks, thanks, Heather. Thank you. <laughs> Just ruin the setup. Perfect, perfect timing, as always. So the movie we're reviewing is <laughs> technically a Broadway show called Hamilton. Directed by Thomas Kael. It's inspired by the book Alexander Hamilton, or we should do it Alexander Hamilton by Ron. The first time Pernow. you got it. Right. Uh, music, lyrics, and book by Lynn Manuel Miranda, starring Lynn Manuel Miranda and a whole slew of actors. Uh, here's the plot The real life of one of America's. America's foremost founding fathers, the first Secretary of Treasury, Alexander Hamilton, captured live on Broadway from the Richard Rogers Theater with the original Broadway cast. All right, I'm assuming <laughs> that we've all seen it on yes. Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we will decide this movie is worth a delivery, watch it immediately, uh, uh, curbside pickup, wait, watch it whenever you get a chance if you're bored, or leftovers, toss this film in the trash. 
Uh, Heather, even though you're a guest, we're still not going to do any points. So no points. <laughs> no points. All right. Because technically you're not a guest anymore. You're part of Movie Menu family as a host of Movie Menu Classics. That's true. So, so the rewards of joining you guys is like less perks? I don't... Yes, correct. Yeah. It's okay. more suffering, actually. Yeah. Well, I don't remember suff- this being in my contract. Oh, wait, more there suffering. Wasn't that. Never mind. <laughs> exactly. More suffering for sure, but definitely uh, not having to do a segment is a perk. So we are doing a you a favor. Yeah, he's uh, wrong about that. You guys are so nice. Trust us. Thank you. On that note, let's go ahead and get into the review. Let's rate this film. Z, you go first, because I know you hate musicals, and I'm curious to know what you thought of this, this musical. I, I, I hate musicals. I stand by my statement. I know that some people are like, what? How can you dislike musicals? And I'll tell you why. It's because they don't talk. They, they sing. Um, that's, I, I, that really is the, the reason. It's hard for me to track what people are saying throughout the musicals, and this, mov- this movie slash whatever it's called, uh, filming of stage play, uh, had the same issue for me. Uh, I couldn't track it. I couldn't really stay focused uh, unless I like sat myself down and and put subtitles on and really had to like focus on what was being said. Um, and for that reason, I would say this movie is probably for me a um, a takeout. What's it called again? De- not delivery. It's a curb 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 for me. I, I know you guys are gonna disagree with me on that, but personally, I could not track the story as well as I wish it could. Because I was more like when I listen to music, I want to like focus and feel the music. This was really hard to do that when there's content being spoken within the the, the musical itself. So I'm gonna say it's a a curbside pickup for me. Heather, Z, I'm actually not disagreeing with you in the sense that it is oh. challenging. Well, hold on, don't get too excited. Okay. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. I'm really excited. So, no, 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 but. So it, it, it was challenging because I've never seen this musical before. And I'd heard random snippets of the music. And honestly, I went into this um, really thinking it was going to be way overhyped. And I was prepared to just be like, eh, about mm-hmm. it. Um, but I really struggled at first. So I, I don't know if you know this, but I'm actually deaf in one ear. Mm-hmm. My left ear doesn't work really. So where I sit in the, on the couch, we have a sectional and I kind of sit in like the corner of the couch up against a wall. So my good ear mm. is like up against this wall. I didn't really realize how bad this was for TV watching until trying to watch this musical. Um, mm. The first, we like, were watching the first 15 minutes and I have no idea what the hell's going on. Like, I don't understand. And I didn't really want to put on captions because I didn't want to, I, I normally watch TV with captions on. Like that's my life. Mm-hmm. Every time I watch TV, I have the captions on. Um, but I didn't want to do that because I wanted to not miss the spectacle. Because right. I am a theater person. I like That's what I go to theater for is the spectacle. So I did struggle with this. I found out if I sat in the middle of the couch that I could hear a lot better. We turned it up really loud and irritated <laughs> everyone in my house. Um, but with that being said, after watching this, um, Stephen Colbert said it best i can't i think it was stephen colbert no anyway one of those dudes he was uh, he said like the first 15 minutes you're watching this you're like this is this is pretty cool i wonder if they can keep this up and then the next Mm -hmm. 15 minutes you're like oh damn this is actually pretty good and then by the end you're like why am i crying about alexander hamilton (laughs) uh this is a what is it delivery delivery yeah delivery delivery. holy shit it's amazing Mm -hmm. and then the second time i watched it i put the captions on and yes i watched it a second time and it's great i really wanted to tell you it was overhyped uh dan (laughs) but damn this is a good it's brilliant lin manuel hold hold on a second because because dan's about to overhype it go ahead dan what's your uh what's your rating as someone who saw it live and on disney plus Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. it's definitely a delivery watch it uh-huh. and i don't need to give a long-winded reason why uh <laughs> sorry that was super it, long-winded <laughs> that was super I'm, long-winded i'm just kidding um no the you know what the funny thing is like i saw it live obviously and obviously mm-hmm. the heather like you mentioned with with watching the stage production you don't have the luxury of subtitles so i'm i'm gonna agree that at first it was kind of like bombarding because there's so much information being thrown at you in the first like 15 mm-hmm. minutes of it that 
you are you are trying to understand Hamilton's childhood, growing up, losing his mother to sickness, becoming an orphan, and all the all this stuff basically that they are singing to you and rapping to you. That is just all this, and the uh, company and Sambo are are doing it as well as dancing and singing. So this whole thing is going on, and you're trying to follow along with the story. It's not so easy, and uh, so definitely when I watched it, I watched it with subtitles, uh, and that also helped. But also watching with subti- subtitles, I would say, actually made you appreciate the lyric and the writing that Lin Manuel did for the musical because it's fucking brilliant. Like yes, just 100%. the way the writing. The rhyming, the the lyrics, the way that everything is interwoven with each other, it weaves. It's just fucking phenomenal. Yeah, I'll give you that. I think that that I agree with um with what Heather said, or at least the quote that she was quoting. Um, what was that like? Fifteen minutes in, I was like, they can't keep this up. And then fifteen minutes past that, you're like, wow, this is really amazing. And never was I not wowed in this in this uh, uh performance. My issue is. Is this a movie? Is this is like is this content that we want to call a movie? And does it does it work in the same way that say like Moulin Rouge or or any of the other musicals work? It is the full length of the production, right? So this movie is what three and a half hours long? No, it's two hours and forty minutes, and then okay. there was like a like a minute intermission or two minute intermission or something yeah so typically uh, the, typically uh, typically the show is three hours long because the intermission is about 15 to 20 minutes 15 so. minutes right exactly so this movie is two hours and 40 minutes long and and boy do you really feel it and i think honestly i had to watch this movie in parts because it was just so hard to sit down as heather was saying and how you know just not being able to really comprehend things once i got to the second like to to the sec to the, the second act I was gung ho. I was signed in, and I was ready to finish watching this movie. Like, I was excited. Uh, my my rating is only given because it was hard to watch, and as a film, it doesn't really feel like a film. I want to see an actual production of this. Uh, I think the story is amazing, and I think all of us asking questions of, "Oh, this Hamilton guy was really interesting." Oh, Jefferson was a little bitch. You know, there's <laughs> there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of things about history that we don't talk about as Americans. That this this I think that that Lim Manuel did a really good job of highlighting. I don't think that this movie deserves to be called a movie per se, and I think that's where my line gets drawn. I don't think this is a movie. Should it be watched? Yes, absolutely. It's amazing. The rapping is phenomenal. Um, and so, and and just, just on a point of social politics, the messaging there is amazing. So it's... So I think, it's, I, think, yeah. I think you're missing the actual, what this is. It's not that it's a movie. It's a mm. filmed musical. It's filmed. Correct. Yes. So... Uh, it's not meant to be like uh, uh, a, like it's not going to win an Oscar because it doesn't qualify for an Oscar basically correct but uh, it's still shot beautifully uh, this was actually intended to be in theaters it was supposed to be uh, they were shopping around for studios to go around but then when the pandemic happened uh, Disney Plus was, gonna be a, was this going to be a Fathom like a Fathom event not, not so much like a Phantom event, but it, I guess kind of like a Phantom event. Uh, but it was set to be in theaters, like in, mm. in movie theaters. Like not a Phantom to be event. A, not, yeah, like not to be, but, but it wasn't going to be called a Phantom event. It was like going to be its own release thing. It was going to be its own stuff. Um, mm. But it wasn't meant to be streaming, but because of the pandemic, it happened. And it's true. I will say that there were some distractions watching it at home because it is almost three hours. And that's a long time to dedicate it's watching something at, time. at home. In theater, it's it doesn't feel like it because you are not distracted. You put your phone away, and you there's mm-hmm. people don't talk to you, and you know you're able to immerse yourself into what you're watching. When you're home, you know there's family people, family members. There's your phone. There's other stuff going on that that's so distracting that will take your attention away for moments. Mm-hmm. And I found that happening a couple of times with me, but. I, I was able to always go back to where I veered off or was able to pause it or whatever. But, uh, but overall, I, I still enjoyed watching the Broadway, the original Broadway cast as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause you didn't see it with the original, right? No, I saw it with the touring cast. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, I think this movie, again, it's hard to not call this movie. 
Um, but I think that this production is is best taken in 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 chunks, right? It's like cut a piece off here, watch this little piece, cut this piece off, and little by little you can ch to chunk it away. Um, I think that if you're looking to watch something that's I think e equal to but in a filmed uh, way, watch John Adams on HBO. Uh, that was an amazing production of the the founding father stories, and Hamilton does come out in that as well. Um, but it's like, yeah, if you're if you have a difficult time tracking, this is not the movie for you. Anyways, let's let's talk about your impressions of the story of Hamilton, Heather. Mm. What did you think about uh, the way the story was told, the way the story was unraveled, and what did you think about the music as well? Um, it was brilliantly done. I, the storytelling was fantastic from a theatrical standpoint. Um, it, it really was a spectacle. I, I love, I love the production quality of this. I love the design, like the set, the costumes, the lighting. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything about this is top notch. It really is not a movie. It's, it's, you get, you get to watch a theatrical production, but you get to have close-ups, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Although I kind of wish that there was a long form version that you could watch, meaning that they showed the whole stage the entire time. Close-ups are awesome, but there's so much ensemble going on throughout the production that you kind of catch glimpses of it. Like a lot of times during these numbers, the ensemble is on the second level of the mm -hmm. set or doing stuff in the background. And I really wish that I could see that as much as I love being able to see the close-ups of their faces, which you don't necessarily get in a, in a theater setting, depending on how great your seats are. Um, Cause I've seen musicals where the stage was like a couple inches big, I swear. Like, it's like, oh look, I'm looking at everyone and they're tiny. Um, yeah. And you just, you're there for like the music and the overall spectacle of everything. So that was cool, but I wish that there was a long format version that you could also watch, so I could I see feel everything like, about it. I feel like that would not be done unless it was pirated, because I think they <laughs> want you to experience it live. If you want to see it that way, like this was That's intentional. Fair. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, it makes sense. They like, go go see it definitely. Unfortunately, like I can't go see it. You know, like no. it's not well, an option no, right now. No, no one can. So, yeah, yeah. So you're not um, alone. It's. And it, it took a while for me to, you know, understand everything that's going on. Uh, it's definitely something that you kind of want to experience a couple times. Mm. I almost feel like because like Dan said, the the beginning is so much exposition and it's it's thrown at you so quickly and so much like information overload. Mm -hmm. like just so much sound and music and info. It's it's really overwhelming. Um so I really enjoyed the second time around, just really delving into like the words. The captions were fantastic for that. And it, it's brilliant. It is brilliant storytelling. Absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic. Something, something that I love as well is the method that Lynn Monroe decided to tell the story was not so much through the voice of, of Alexander Hamilton himself. But it's like Aaron Burr telling the story, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the perspective of other people around Alexander Hamilton because it's also like Eliza, the way she first sees him and, and, then, mm -hmm. and then Angelica, Angelica. when she sees mm -hmm. him. That, yeah, that rewind, that is, rewind scene is amazing. Yeah. Okay, oh my God, so, I watched it like four times. So <laughs> imagine watching that. And th that so that's why I was like, the beginning was awesome. But once that rewind scene happened and you realize you re watching the same scene you saw but through a, a different perspective whoa mind explosion beautiful amazingly watched it was so fun and, and great to watch and to watch it even in disney plus was still amazing to watch too it, loved it yeah that's yeah. my question for you dan how similar because you you didn't even see the original cast you saw what year did you see it in because this was 2016 the film version 2017. Wait, did you see it? Okay, so you saw it a year later, but with the touring cast. How, how, like, tell me about the similarities and difference between, like, the set and oh, the every, every Everything was the same. It's, uh, though, obviously, Lynn Monroe was, uh, it's hard to beat or hard, hard to capture that type of performance. Though the lead actor who played um, Alexander Hamilton did a great job as well. Was the was, rest of the was, cast the same or? No, no, everyone was different, but everyone did a great job. Like, okay. I enjoyed it so much. So but it was nice to see this, the original Broadway cast. 
the set was still like the moving the set yeah the set was still yeah the set was exactly the same everything was the costumes everything and i and i will say that heather to your point the fact that you had talked about yeah the ensemble are rarely off the stage they're usually like on the sidelines or on up or on the second floor they rarely leave the, and the I feel like that's so powerful theatrically because the moments that someone is on stage alone is so much more significant because you always have that that busy crowded but you also city get, life feeling and then you have the, those moments of solidarity and but you really also powerful. get the like the singing involved like the 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 whispering singing that goes on um, mm. that helps like encapsulate the emotions that are going on on stage so it's 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 great it's pretty awesome i love the use of that i mean they they almost in a sense overused it the spinning platform in the middle but the way they used it was continually creative so like that's I, a, we kind of saw the same mechanics happening where you know people are being moved away from a scene and it show is very symbolic and and just but i was as as much as I was like, oh, am I going to be bored of this trope throughout this production? They continue to surprise me with how they used it, well, and it so, was amazing. So, Lin Manuel, I believe, I believe in in the Heights, the set also had that too. So, this is not he's not a stranger to using the circular um, revolving platform. Uh, mm -hmm. That's uh, in his other musical that that he did in the Heights, which is also another amazing musical. I highly recommend yeah, it. Yeah, I've it. never gotten to see it. I'm really excited about the film version of that if it ever happens. Yeah, uh, he uses it in, in the in, uh, on Broadway too. So I feel though in this one, uh, they definitely used it to their uh, maximum that they could have used, which I I enjoyed. Thought it was a cool effect. So Z, do you hmm. you don't like musicals in film format, or do you not like musicals even a theatrical format? You can ask Dan that question if you want. <laughs> I don't. I don't like. I don't like going to musicals. I don't like going to shows. He, he doesn't like going um, to theaters. I think the or only theaters, show. Yeah. He, I think the only show he's ever seen was Avocado Kid, which, funny enough, Heather worked on with me. Yeah. <laughs> that was my um, first show, and, and that was the worst musical of all time. So it I don't... was pretty awful. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, uh, but no, I just can't. I can't sit in the room, and I cannot disconnect my 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 sense of disbelief and so yeah i just have a very difficult time watching musicals i don't i don't understand the spectacle of it i don't feel enamored by it i can tolerate music and singing in cartoons but i cannot tolerate it in like live action stuff so it just there is just a difficulty that i have there i thought aladdin was probably the closest i got to really enjoying a musical um but that's because it was based off of a, of a great animation that i loved um, so yeah, so with this one, I, I, like I said, this one I thought was great because there was different, different levels of hip hop that I thought was really interesting to watch. Um, and the musical, uh, the performances for me were so amazing. Leslie Odom Jr. was fantastic. Uh, David Diggs was brilliant. Um, I think Chris Jackson, uh, who played George Washington nailed it. Like I was blown away. And, uh, the actress who plays Angelica was Phenomenal. I mean, there's just uh, Renee Elise Goldberry. I mean, they even Philippa So. I mean, they all did an amazing job. And I've it's funny because I've actually listened to the yeah. Hamilton can can soundtrack. I really can I really quick because someone failed to actually add the cast in the show notes. Can You're I welcome. Get, can I also uh, just list Did, the names of the cast real quick because uh, listen, I there, you have ID. I have IMDb as well. I'm just saying. I'm looking at it right now, so uh, okay, I want to give a it. shout out to the cast. Because I, I already did, but go ahead. Yes. Uh, so uh, this <laughs> musical is amazing, starring David Diggs, mm -hmm. uh, Renee Elise Goldsberry, Jonathan Groff. Oh, I said that. Chris Groff Jackson. was great. Oh, man. Yeah. He uh, was so good. I have to say that some of my favorite numbers is the stuff with King George. That was amazing. Also, trivia did you guys know that Jonathan Groff is the voice of Kristoff in Frozen? Mm, oh, yeah, no, I knew I that. Didn't. Yeah, I what I that. liked about Jonathan Groff was that that at every take he did with uh, King George, I was just watching his lips, hoping he'd spit again. Oh, that's it was. That's, I was okay. 
I, it was interesting. <laughs> it was fascinating because he's he's pronouncing every single every syllable. Every syllable. Yeah. But what I love about him and his stage presence is that even though he was spitting all over himself because he was pronouncing every syllable excruciatingly precisely, he did mm-hmm. not flinch. He did yeah. not break character. He did not wipe it off till he was off yep. stage. And I was like, and what I liked Damn, about that was him. Awesome. Is- yeah, what I liked about him is you can really see that there's like this tension in his chest and he's holding his body very still, but his mouth is the thing that's expressing it. So I'm, I'm not I'm not panning him. I, I honestly I loved it well, uh, because you can really see enough, his. That's how they depicted you can see the his British. Emotion. You see his emotion. That's how they depicted the, the British in, in this musical as is, is have been like stiff upper lips and, and uh, bodies and because even the other British person who like makes the, the treaty or, or whatever is almost exactly as stiff and, and whatnot like, like King George. I may need to rewatch it if that's the case. Uh, but going back, so I continue with the yeah. cast. So then obviously Limon Miranda, Leslie Odom Jr. who played Aaron Burr who was amazing. Um, and Anthony oh, Ramos. Skipped Chris Jackson. Yeah, you, you no, skipped Chris Jackson. Jasmine no. Jones. I don't, oh, uh, Christopher Jackson and yeah, Jas- Jasmine Sephras Jones. Sorry, uh, as Peggy and uh, Mariah. Um, yeah. Okirieti, Ona Doen. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Please, her nailed uh, it. But he was great. Oh yeah. man, he was really. When he came on stage. And James he had Madison. presence. So yeah. he's so he's on um, Station Nineteen, which is a spinoff from Grey's Anatomy. He's one of the firefighters oh. on that show. So I'm familiar with him from that. Um, oh, and okay. he's. I had no idea he had any musical prowess at all. And I'm, I start to watch this and I'm like, oh shit, that's that Station 19 guy. And he was amazing. The, I can't amazing. pronounce his name. I'm not going to try. But the guy who played Hercules Mulligan and James Madison, he was fantastic. Okay, really? But it was so cool because I had this other connection with him. Also, uh, Chris Jackson, who played George Washington, he's yes. on the show Bull with uh, uh, Michael Featherly. The oh, guy that's from cool. NCIS. He he's the original Benny from In the Heights, which is awesome. Which is oh, was really played Lin Manuel's best friend in In the Heights. So that's cool that I he's doing. Really, I had no cool. idea Chris Jackson was musical either. I only know him from from Bull because I've like watched all of Bull. Which is funny because I I expected Chris Jackson. I didn't really. I mean, I knew he was George Washington, which which is a good role. But um, uh, Benny was like the second lead, and in, in the Heights, I would have thought that maybe he would have been. But maybe because he was doing the show Bull or something. Maybe, or, but he was fantastic as George Washington. Oh my he was. goodness. Yeah. It was amazing. Anthony yeah, Ramos right. as John Lawrence and Philip <laughs> Hamilton. And right, Philip Philippa So as Eliza Hamilton. Oh man. Also what I, so there's so much story in this that is that you could you know, do you take a, about war, uh, the revolution? Um, and then also the the love triangle between the Skylar sisters and Hamilton, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. which which Angelica, that song um, satisfied Ugh, is one of yeah. my favorites. Yeah, so it's so heartbreaking to see like a forbidden love like that, and like for, loving someone and not able to act on it because of you know something else. So that was amazing. Um, also, you get to see. Uh, Hamilton as a lawyer, and then you see him as a father, and then you see what happens to his, his all, all this stuff that happens. It's just there's. Did so you finish much. with the cast, or are you are you, are you like? Yes, yes, the, I right. finished. Yes, I finished. Oh, okay. I'm talking. Thank you. Oh, I wasn't sure. I'm sorry. And just going through Hamilton's day, but first of all, the main thing I want to say is just the fact that Lin Manuel Miranda did this musical to have the you know people of color on stage. Mm-hmm. Is, so inspiring and beautiful to watch. It makes me so happy to see it. Yeah. I think politically that really does send a, a clear message. And we know that, you know, if you follow the news that he did send a clear message to the president, um, you know, I love the fact that he had multiracial cast. It made the discussion of slavery an interesting topical one when, when, you know, like I feel like this movie was released during the right time. Not only, you know, not only because it was July 3rd and July 4th weekend, but it was because it was released during a time in which we're really talking about, you know, the racial divide that, that race line that we've, we've ignored for a long period of time. And the way that this movie really highlighted 
uh, people of color, voices of people of color in a magnificent way, I think that's what really kind of like stood out to me. It was like, wow, this is really, really good. And it, it was such a, a phenomenal way of, of, of showcasing that. Um, yes, the story is amazing. Um, I don't think that this movie, again, this movie does not really dive deep into that, but you know, most of your history books didn't. And I think that this movie just, just like this movie, uh, I feel like allows us to go, Hey, I'm interested in finding out more. Right. And also like, I feel like the main theme is the last song. Like Mm -hmm. who's going to tell your story. Right. And the fact that all these different people were, were having their experience and the perspectives on who Hamilton was and told their side and continue to tell their side. I feel like history is recorded by who is there to tell it. So who is there to tell the story and how are they going to tell it? And so the way that then we decided to tell this story through the book that was inspired by it, I feel like right. he did such a great job compacting a whole person's lifetime into two hours and 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Also, and, I and, think... And that's... Go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say on... Um, the diversity of the cast is is really for me proves a point that it doesn't matter it, it's it's irrelevant who's if you can act it you can perform it it doesn't like your your skin color doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to play a part it's, it's irrelevant I didn't care that they weren't you know George Washington wasn't a white guy wearing a wig mm-hmm. like it didn't matter to me I I believed the characters because they right. were performing it so well it, it it really proves a point that it doesn't matter and that's what mm-hmm. was beautiful to me that these these stories our founding fathers are told by americans and that's the important part not not the color well, of their skin yeah i really i really like that what you just said because that's that's kind of how i felt about george washington was like george washington was always described as the the largest man in the room and i think that the actor um did an amazing job of of being that whenever he walked on stage i was like oh here it comes you know here comes washington and i really did feel that happening sorry i i i know what you mean heather but actually i feel like it did it does matter and like lin Monroe did this on purpose to show that it's not that it doesn't matter but that the skin color, I don't know how to say it, but it's, it, it does not, it doesn't matter. It matters in the sense, like these people should be able to tell these stories. Does that make sense? I, like, I it was, we're it, was the per- same per- thing, it but... is, but, but I feel like not to unhighlight it by saying it doesn't matter. I feel like, sh- like it was purposeful that it was people of color. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not that it was like, oh, I'm going to give these people, oh, I'm going to do a blind casting. And, and no, no, specifically, it was going to be uh, uh, people of color going to be on this stage, purposeful. Not I actually, that, you know. I, I, I'm going to 100% agree with you that that wording is much better and much, it, it, it's the same sentiment that I'm feeling, except it, it, extend, it, it highlights it more specifically than what I was saying. So I'm going to agree with you that this casting was, you're right, specific, and it proved the point. Perfect. And yes. I yeah, you. I figured we were on the same page. I just wanted to like make sure it was said. Yeah. Properly. And what I was talking about <laughs> <Properly>. was more <laughs> what, I, what I was saying was more like spiritually or like the presence of those characters were done really well. Like Jefferson being a pompous ass was done really well. And you know, the history books would show you that. And so there was all these like and, and sure enough, they're played by people of color. And so they come across as like like I didn't need to see them as white actors because their presence was enough to show me who these characters were during that period of time. So it's awesome that that Lin-Manuel is highlighting that, but I think what Lin-Manuel does so well in this movie or in the story is that he really knew how to capture those personalities regardless of the skin color. And you didn't and, and and the key point is you didn't need to see the actors white face themselves. You know, they didn't have to like you know, put white face on to make themselves look like the, they well, they did it by the personalities and by what they were representing. And that was a really cool thing to watch. 
Well, it was, it was like if in this universe, like it was specifically like, what if these people look like this? You know, what if these were the founding fathers? Uh, also, I, I really enjoyed the fact that they used modern uh, uh, costumes as well. Uh, like um, Mulligan was wearing like a beanie and, oh. uh, um, and there was just like a lot of modern clothing that were, that were infused with the uh, costumes in the past. Which I I would uh, well no no but be okay th- th- I, arguably beanies were around during that time like a lot of people but would not, wear not, not the beanies yeah, 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 that yeah, were yeah, used yeah. specifically no and, no, and no, the, no 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 but the but, costume yeah. design specifically took it was it was like little modern touches on the historical clothing yes. like the the ensemble I love like if you watch the curtain call they're all except for the leads, they're all just in that beige neutral undertone costumes Mm -hmm. that they had with the tights and the vests. And um, those are a modern like take on the- Like a modern interpretation? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, and I and I did I love that too. Just additionally, the the costuming for those those characters are the you said the background characters. What did you call them again? The ensemble. The ensembles, yeah, because they they represented at least from what what I was watching was like the ghost of the past and how they, you know, you you have like history moving forward, but you still have those ghosts ghostly characters still wearing the the articles of the past. I thought that was really a really interesting touch as well. Because they're all in white, they're all in that beige white, and at the very last moments where you see the duel, you get to see them really kind of come out and be participants in the the duel itself. Yeah, that's one of the really cool things. The way, and this is one of my favorite things about theater is you can take kind of a blank slate, a an open space. Like there's the set is you know got the ambiance of the time period, but there's not much on it. They kind of bring in pieces like just simple things, and the setup and the lighting and the placement of the actors can tell you a whole story and put you in a whole setting. Like when they go to the theater, there was just a couple chairs, but you felt like you got the idea. He's sitting in the balcony, and there's a play going on. Um, when in the beginning, the very first number, they have like rope coming down and a little anchor point, And it's like, you get the idea of a ship. Like there's all these just little things can transport you in theater. And that's really cool. And one of my favorite moments was during the, um, the song hurricane, when he's talking about being in the eye of the hurricane and literally mm-hmm. he's standing in the middle and the cast is moving around him. I don't know what the magical lighting effect is there, but I don't know if you noticed it was almost like a filter where only red showed up. So Angelica's dress, or not the, not mm. Angelica, the one that he was um, having the affair with, her dress is highlighted in red. And then behind him, there's someone going by wearing um, a revolutionary jacket and the collar and the sleeves, like the, the cuff is red and that highlights. And I was mm. like, this is amazing. Like tech, the technical theater wise, that blew my mind. Just the cool. the visual storytelling there, absolutely stellar. That's great. So cool. Also, that one of my favorite, my, this one of my favorite lines uh, I want to say is was, uh, "Immigrants, we get the job done." That, that, yes. That's, <laughs> that's yeah. Like amazing. And it's true. Lafayette was uh, was a was an expat. He was definitely a Frenchman. Uh, what's interesting about Lafayette it was that he was technically a pirate during that uh, during that those battles. Uh, but it's it's rarely talked about that a pirate fought on the U.S. side, and he's actually the one who who kind of like made it easier to win. So it's again really interesting storytelling. Now I have a question for you, Z, because Heather, I know you mm. you understand the concept, but did it confuse you to see? Uh, David Diggs play Lafayette and then play Thomas Jefferson after. Uh, define confusion. Because they're the like, same. Was person. I like, oh, is the same as like, is it? Oh, it's no longer Lafayette. No, yeah. I didn't think so. No, okay. because so you again, got you got pa- the fact that in Act Two he was a totally different person. Same thing with with uh, Madison and 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 Mulligan. Yes, I'm not an idiot, Dan. I can I can differentiate. No, but I. It's think, not about I being an idiot. I- <laughs> it's just that the fact that it's so. <laughs> It's so rushed in the sense that I wasn't sure if you got that at all. I think it, I think once once again what I said was was that the personalities that that Limanuel wrote come out really clearly, 
And so when when uh, I forget, sorry, that actor's name, uh, David Diggs, when he appears as Jefferson, I didn't see David Diggs. I saw Jefferson. And I really didn't see Lafayette. Like when I saw him, I was like, "Oh, I know Debbie Diggs. He's a really cool actor." Um, but I was like, "That's Lafayette. Cool. I love Lafayette." And then when he appears as Jefferson, I was like, "He comes across as Jefferson, and he really shows." And even at that, like I, I honestly did not catch the James Madison Hercules Mulligan. Uh, I didn't. I didn't think it was the same actor. I was actually surprised by that. Um, so I thought that was just really cool. So okay, no, just, no, I did just not. Just checking, just checking the fact that you know the whole double casting situation because I know me and Heather do. I was just seeing if you did too. I no, I, I I don't know. I don't. Is that a, is that a stage play thing? Is that something that happens? Absolutely, yeah, people, all yeah. the time. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Because otherwise, know. otherwise you have to pay <laughs> twice as many actors. So the way to cut down on the budget and the costumes and everything mm-hmm. is to. Uh, Double cast. <laughs> gotcha. Cast okay. cast one person in two roles, <laughs> or, as, or or as many roles as they can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, we we worked on a show a couple of years ago where there was like fifteen characters, but only seven actors, mm-hmm. and they jumped around in between the characters, like from scene to scene, and they just walk into the next scene. And that was a technical nightmare to figure out, but it worked really well. Cool. So, uh, final thoughts, guys. Or do you guys want to talk about anything else? No, so no I can do final thoughts. About, but yeah. final thoughts. Um, okay. I I enjoyed it. I think that if you can watch it, uh, watch it in snippets. Uh, it is an interestingly historical retelling. And I think for that, I enjoyed it. Uh, because it really does shine the light on the Founding Fathers as not being these perfect representations of democracy. They are flawed and hypocritical to the maximum. And I love seeing that. I mean, even at that, like John Hamilton, sorry, Alexander Hamilton having an affair uh, gets frowned by Thomas Jefferson, who owns slaves and had an affair with a 14 year old girl. And it's like, that that doesn't get highlighted, but you know in the background that that's what's going on. These are these are real people that we forget had really flawed stories. Although they did something amazing, they really they really were not perfect individuals. And I thought that the way that uh, Le Manuel drew them was fabulous and enjoyable. Heather, um, on paper, this sounded like an absolutely terrible idea. Um, let's make a rap musical about agreed, Alexander agreed. Hamilton. Like what? Like who who thought that we would give a crap? But damn, it worked out. And I really think that the genius of Lynn Manuel's writing is just you can't really overstate it. Like his his lyric composure his music composure like it just is brilliantly done the storytelling is brilliant and these characters are so relatable like Mm -hmm. he's taking this maybe boring stuffy subject we always see these like it's like portraits and pictures and history books but it it makes it so relatable to to us modern day like I think that's the brilliance of this is that we actually do end up caring about these characters and this time period and we understand them I think like, oh man, we didn't even talk about the fact that the to- like the rap battles in Congress, mm, like they were what? Great. That is yeah. brilliant. The second it started, I was like, <laughs> it's obvious, but perfect. Um, I uh, think cabinet, it wasn't, it was in Congress. It was cabinet. Oh, you're uh, right. Yeah. yeah the, like cabinet yeah. meetings, but just like yeah. debates, right? Political debates. Mm-hmm. They kind of really, if you put that in a musical, yeah, it'd be a rap battle. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, I think to watch this, you need to go into it really understanding that you're watching a theatrical production and it's not a movie. Mm-hmm. But okay. definitely watch it. Yeah. yeah. Um, something that we didn't touch on is the fact that I also love the aspect of the Aaron Burr character who is mm-hmm. like, it reminds me similar, but not, I mean, they weren't the best of friends, but they were still friends, uh, Hamilton and, and, and Aaron Burr. Uh, but it's, yeah, but it's like that 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 um, friendship turned enemy type of relationship mm-hmm. that I really enjoyed as well, like Bagnito and and Xavier, <laughs> um, you know, like just those those typical stories. But this really happened in real life. It's not the fact that uh, it's just like 
a nonfiction story. This is stuff that was told in in a. a I mean, a Magnino Professor Xavier also happened in real life. It happened with with Malcolm Martin X King and, 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 and Yes, <laughs> yes. So with all that stuff happening, it's just so interesting to watch, the, like the the evolution of of a friendship into an enemy as well, which was was great, and the storytelling of that. Um, and like Aaron Burr being so similar too, like he also was in love with the married woman who who had a husband who was British, like all these scandals and all this drama and all this like craziness that you would think a soap opera would have, but it was their life. And just yeah. to see it portrayed on, on stage was, was so fun and so interesting to watch. I think if you can focus, I would say watch the whole thing through. And I feel like it, you get more enjoyment out of it than just like stopping and going, stopping and going. Um, and yeah. I, I would definitely I, agree with that because you need it, it, the overall feel is really important. Like it, it, it flows so well. I had trouble watching it in pieces personally when I had to keep stopping and starting. That's why I actually rewatched it mm -hmm. um, because I really wanted to get the overall feel. And, and going back to your point about uh, them just being people, like men, like we understand. I love the moment where Aaron Burr and Hamilton are on the stage together but it's you can obviously tell they're supposed to be in separate places and they're singing the and same the song son? it's like love their about their their well the, his the, daughter well and daughter yeah the kids yeah mm -hmm. but it's just like they're just men that love their families and they have this hope for this new nation and like we're gonna we're gonna fight for it we're gonna build it it's just like this beautiful hopeful moment and these two men are on exactly the same page they don't even know it right Mm -hmm. and it's interesting to see them diverge so much from that into where history takes them right the different philosophies i think i think dan if you're really interested in i mean there's way more drama to the story i mean there's way more that happened during those the 1776 the drama that it was involved i would suggest reading the book um you know the the book that that um liminal based it off of the, the history it's not, books it's not rapping it's not that, singing <laughs> okay but but honestly though like edge i mean not to say like educate yourself but honestly like really do read those books the the history books your history teachers did a disservice to all of us american history wasn't told by the right people and i think that if you really do go into the nitty-gritty of like what was actually being talked about uh during those early days I think you'd get a lot out of it. Like people glorify Jefferson, but he really fought for slavery, you know, and I, what I liked about Hamilton is that he was a very much an anti-slaver. The reason why he wrote the Federalist Papers was because he was against slavery and he wanted to take that power away from the Southerners. But then there was that one, that one song of there was nobody else in the room. And it's like, that's the deal that was cut to let the South continue their slavery. So it was really interesting that, that like, Hamilton had to sell his soul to save the nation. And it's like, that's what leads to his downfall. Like that's what leads to everything else. Like his corruption starts from there. So I think it's really interesting. If you really want to read the stories, those are some really great places to start. We'll read John Adams by John McCullough. That's another really great uh, book to, to look into. 1776 by John McCullough is also really amazing. There's a lot of good historical books. Andrew Jackson was another interesting character who was written by um, I forget the, the 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 author, but I can get you a list of really great history books that do a much better job of telling the history of the founding fathers, who were absolutely human, and they were in love, and they were idiots, and they did a lot of mistakes, and and hypocrites. But I mean, what happens, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, totally. but, but but also what I was gonna say, besides just watching, trying to watch this in one sitting. I would also highly recommend uh, listening to the soundtrack as much as you can. Um, yeah, the remix is really great too. Yeah, this. So once you watch it, and once you can, you, you listen to the album, and you can actually start putting pieces together as well. Will mm -hmm. also help you understand what you're watching as well. So I think, I think I, both ways are more enjoyable. And sure, I'll look up the books. Let's see. Also, check out Lin Manuel doing drunk history about this. Yes, and Aubrey agreed. Plaza plays Aaron Burr and it's hilarious. <laughs> it is amazing. <laughs> and can I give a quick shout out to, uh, actually, I'm not even asking permission. I'm just going to do it. Um, Howard Ho, one of our friends. Oh, yeah, Howard. Here. Yay. So he, I only just learned this recently. Sorry, Howard, but it's really awesome. He has a YouTube channel where he like does all kinds of things musically. Like he's an amazing um, sound designer and musician and composer. 
but he has a YouTube channel. It's just Howard Ho. But if you look up Howard Ho on Hamilton, he has a whole bunch of stuff on Hamilton, including like a three part series entitled like why Hamilton makes you cry and Mm -hmm. fascinating. Like it really goes into like, it breaks down the musical reasons why. So it's very technical, but it's also like, I don't know anything about music technically, but I was still fascinated. So shout out to Howard. You got to check it out. It's an awesome show. You know, you know, Lin-Manuel actually like, when someone asked him about a question about that, he literally sourced Howard's uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, uh, so cool. Which, which I thought was like, oh my God, he's, Howard was just like, oh my God, I could die now. Like he was, <laughs> you know, then my mom retweeted, you know, the YouTube link. Like, watch this and you'll find out why. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's Lin Manuel Miranda uh, approved. So definitely go check it out, Howard Ho, uh, H O. All right, so uh, I think that'll do it for us here at Movie Menu Reviews. Uh, sorry, Z, we're gonna say delivery. Go watch this immediately. And, That's fine. Uh, one sitting, if you can. Uh, Good luck. Uh, though I'm gonna toss the microphone over to you. Oh, you are. I am. Okay, is this because of of the the announcement? Uh, of the announcement. Yeah, so are we talking about Mike at all or are we going to just roll right over that? Mike's not here to talk for himself, but maybe Yeah. Yeah, so we'll just mention that that Mike and and I will be taking a hiatus. Uh we will be I will be taking off uh personally to go uh, get my master's degree. Um I th- the way that I'm seeing the the film industry and the people who have listened to the podcast for the past couple of weeks, months, um you know my opinion on the film industry and where I think things are going. I think that it's unrealistic to expect us to go back to the movie theaters as sad as that is. I really I really do miss going to the theater, but I don't see myself putting myself at risk because of the financial system not understanding that human lives matter. So because of that, Dan is going to continue doing movie mini reviews. However, I'm going to step away uh, and focus on, you know, getting my my uh, my master's degree. Uh, so, yeah. So and then Mike is just simply gone. He he decided to peace out. Um, but I mean, but that's but another ho- story to tell. Hopefully, <laughs> potentially Mike will will be in and out when he can. It's just that Mike. Mike ended up moving, so uh, it's a yeah. lot more difficult for him to to be on mm-hmm. as much as we would like him and as much as he would like. Uh, but hopefully, uh, we can work things out where he can, you know, come on as much as as he yeah. is 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 able to. Um, yeah, potentially when I'm I'm done with my master's degree, I will be able to return. But that's two and a half years down the line, so uh, we shall see where I'm at, you know, in my life during that period. Uh, so to 20 seasons, thank you, Dan, for a, you know amazing uh, work being the host. I really appreciate you well, coming on. Thank you yeah. for being our senior panelist and co-host. Of course, and being here. Of course. Uh, and Heather, thank you so much for for stepping in uh, because Mike couldn't make it today. Uh, yeah, appreciate it. Uh, don't worry, we're still gonna have content. Uh, mm-hmm. We there's still uh, moving menu interviews out there, and there's still moving menu uh, classics, which is hosted by Heather and Vasti. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know we're still going to continue podcasting. So uh, mm-hmm. though we do send Z off uh, with the congrats, and obviously he's always welcome back. Z, you're always welcome back whenever you want. Thank you. Uh, just make sure to give me a heads up. <laughs> uh, well, once once there's a cure for the coronavirus, I will definitely be wanting to return. Yeah, and that's that's totally cool, uh, yeah. and we totally understand. All right, enough of this mushiness. Yes. Uh, so uh, that'll do it for us here at Movie Menu Reviews. Make sure to check out our website, moviemenupodcast.com. Again, that's moviemenupodcast with an S dot com. Uh, and follow us on our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, our YouTube channel, uh, where we've been uploading our Zoom videos. So uh, you can watch us there as well. And also make sure to subscribe to us at Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, uh, soundcloud spotify google play or wherever you listen to your podcast we are there and again we are still gonna have content so don't worry uh we do plan on continuing with movie menu classics uh and we do we will continue to be interviewing filmmakers 
So everything will still be going on. Just check back with us every week for all new episodes. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Z, so much again. Thank you, guys. Until next time, goodbye.